السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة All praise is due to Allah there is no god but he whomsoever Allah guides then none can misguide him. And whomsoever Allah misguides due to his own intention, there can be no guide for him. I bear witness that there is no divinity deserving of worship except Allah alone, and I bear witness that Muhammad wasallam is his servant and messenger. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, his pure family, his noble companions, and all those who follow them with righteousness unto the day of judgment. Verily, the most truthful speech is the book of Allah, and the best guidance and way of life is the guidance of Muhammad wasallam. Allah says in the Holy Quran, instructing us, the believers, to never lose sight that everything we possess in this world including our lives, can be lost any time without any previous warning. He said, اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب ولهو وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرة ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور which means know that know that the life of this world is but play and amusement ornament and mutual Boasting among yourselves, we got more, I got more in this than you. We're boasting. 
and competition for more wealth and children. Its likeness is that of a rain whose vegetation impresses the farmers. Then it withers and you see it turning yellow after it was green, alive, uh, dead after it was alive. Then it crumbles into chaff, into, into straw. Uh, when you harvest, and you, you remove, you take the, the grain from, from what cover it and the remaining are, is not useful except for animals or non-human consumption. So everything crumbles into chaff. And Allah says, while in the hereafter, the life to come, there will be either severe punishment or forgiveness and acceptance from Allah. For the life of this world is nothing but an enjoyment of self-delusion. Last Friday, the khutbah was about embracing death as a natural part of this life. Today, I would like to expand on a few practical ways on how accepting death, embracing death, could be translated into our daily lives. What should we do, knowing that death is coming? Since death is inevitable, but the time it will come to us is unknown. We know that it is inevitable. We don't know when it will come. So there's nothing we, could, we can do to avoid it. But there are many things we can do to prepare for it, to prepare to be ready when it comes. We are not caught off guard. We are ready to meet death. The most important of these things is repentance, tawbah. And tawbah, Repentance involves a change of direction. You're changing your direction from wrong to good. It involves a change of direction that includes correcting one's past mistakes and sins and shortcomings, your mistakes toward Allah, your mistakes toward your brother's people around you, a word that you have said and it offended someone. Um, an action that you have taken and that action has offended someone's feeling. All these tawbah involve correcting that. And you have to correct it before it is late because if that person passes away and you are not able to correct that, there's no way it will be forgiven. And on the day of judgment, there's nothing to pay you accept by taking, um, giving away your good deeds or taking from him his bad deeds, as we will see in the hadith. So tawbah is correcting one's mistake against Allah first, against people, and against yourself. And not only correcting that, but you have to resolve not to return to them in the future. When you're making sincere tawbah, this should be in your mind. Now, whether you will be able to sustain that and, and, uh, and, and, and honor that, that's subject to your strength or your weakness. Some people can fall into mistake many times, but as long as you are aware that whenever I make a mistake, I need to correct it, Allah says that he will accept your repentance. The Prophet Sallallahu said, All the sons of Adam make mistakes. Kullu bani Adam khatta wa khayru al-khattaina at-tawwaboon. So sins and mistakes wronging other people is a nature of human beings. But everyone, uh, the best of those who make these mistakes are those who go back and correct them. 
They ask for forgiveness from those who they have offended. And they ask for, for, for forgiveness from Allah when they sin against Allah. So, khayrul khattaina at Repentance must be consistent so that when our time comes, death takes us while we have fewer sins and mistakes. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ in the hadith said, Ya ayuan nas, tubu ila Allahi fa inni atubu fil yawmi ilayhi mi'ata marra. He said, O oh people, seek repentance from Allah, for I seek repentance a hundred times a day. And that's the Prophet Wasallam. Allah has forgiven all his past and, and future sins. But he does that to be grateful to Allah first and to, to teach us that no one can be beyond repentance or repenting. No one can think that he's good enough not to ask repentance. He's good enough not to ask forgiveness from those he has offended. So the prophet ask forgiveness 100 times a day. Repentance does not only correct the wrong deeds you make or one makes, but it could also be transformed, it could also transform the mistakes that you have done from bad deeds into good deeds in the hereafter on the day of resurrection, if those mistakes were not related to people's right. As mentioned in the hadith of the last person to enter al-Jannah, the last person to enter paradise, and the last person to leave hellfire in the day of resurrection after judgment. The hadith says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says that the hadith that the, that man will be brought to Allah, and Allah will tell his angels to present to him his minor sins and conceal the major sin. Allah will allow the angels on, to present only the minor sins, and the man will be questioned, he will be put to face his sins. Did you do such and such on that day, in that minute, the hadith say, kada wa kada fi yawm, kada wa kada. So everything is recorded. And he will say, yes. And the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa say that he cannot but to accept it. He cannot deny they are all recorded. So he will say, yes. And he will be waiting for the major sins to be presented to him with fear because by the minor sins, he will conclude that I will never be able to make it to Al Jannah after all. So he will be afraid. And Allah will, talk, will tell him that I have not only forgiven those sins, I have turned them from sins to reward and good deed. And the man being a man, who loves, uh, we, uh, ha we all have some greed. The man will want his major sins that he was afraid of and did not see. He will want that to be turned into good deeds again. And he will say, oh Allah, I see some, I have done some things that I don't see it here. Uh, he will hope that this uh, deeds will be transformed also to good deeds. But Allah has concealed the major sins. He did not even allow the angels to see that as a cover for him. So repentance is an important way of preparing the day death will come to us. Another important thing to avoid being surprised by death is to restrain one's long-term wishes. Tulul Amal. Tulul Amal is that when your wishes, your hope, your desires extend beyond your lifespan. 
people will want to have projects or will do so and so maybe after two years, after 10 years, after 50, 15 years, after one day, and you don't know that your project, the life, the time that you're thinking of may be beyond your lifespan. So being able, being having kisarul amal, a short term wishes is part is a way of preparing or being ready for death, and this involves that the believers, uh, the believer lives his life with the assumption that he, he, his or her remaining lifespan would be shorter than what he thinks. And this will prompt, prompt him to worship and perform good deeds with a sense of urgency. Any project that you have, you will want to finish it urgently. You will not take the time that you want. You would do that as if you were ran, running out of time. And that's Qisarul Abal. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a hadith warned us, for, warned, warned us from having a long-term wish. He said, Yahramu ibn Adam وَتَشِبُّ مِنْهُ اثْنَتَانِ الْحِرْسُ عَلَى الْمَالِ وَالْحِرْسُ عَلَى الْعُمُرِ he said, the son of Ibn Adam, the son of Adam grows old, you become old, but two wishes in you remain young, they don't move. You always think that you have time. And these two wishes are the desire for wealth, more money. That's why people will walk till the end of their life wishing that oh, one day we'll make it and we'll have the money, all the money that we, we need. They don't look that oh, the time may be run, running out. So wishes for wealth, money, and wishes for life. Right? We think that always I have time, I have life be, be, uh, before me, and he does not know. In a hadith, the Prophet a famous hadith, the Prophet drew a square on the sand and showed it to his companion. In that square, he drew a line in the middle of the square. I'll try to uh, represent that here. I don't know if it's clear for everybody. So the square, he drew it like this, and then in the middle, there's a line, and that line go beyond the square. And here, he has small lines going against the central line. And he asked his companions, what is this? And of course, they did not know. And the Prophet ﷺ said that this line in the middle represents human being. Uh, that's you here. And this square around you is the box of your lifespan. No matter what you do, you will not be able to live beyond this. You will not be able to get out of this square, which is your lifespan. And then the small line that goes against you, assails you from the two sides. These are the vicissitudes of life, the problems of life, sickness, accident, everything that you can imagine that it can come to you from, from life. If one misses you, the next man does not miss you. If the next miss you, that one is coming later will not miss you, and eventually one of them will take you. But the line that goes beyond, that's your wish, the long wish. You think that you will pass this, but you will never pass this. Death can come any time. So that's why we need to make sure that we are ready. We don't postpone any good deed we have to do. And Allah said in the Quran about those who fail to be prepared before death comes to them. He said, Until 
فإذا نفخ في الصور فلا أنصاب بينهم يومئذ ولا يتساءلون فمن ثقلت موازينه فأولئك هم المفلحون ومن خفت موازينه فأولئك الذين خسروا أنفسهم في جهنم خالدون which means people will delay until when death comes to one of them he would say oh my lord send me back send me back to life send me so that i might act righteously in the things that are neglected the many things that i failed to do send me back and i will act righteously and allah allah says by no means nay by no means it is indeed but a meaningless word that he utters everything that you saying that time is meaningless no one is going back he said it is but a meaningless word that he utters for behind them there is a barrier a barrier until the day when all will be resurrected all will be raised up no will one ask after another no one will try to check on another person everybody is on his own then those whose weight of righteousness is heavy in the balance it is they who will be successful whereas those whose weight in the light is light in the balance it is they who will have squandered squandered their souls they have lost their lives they have lost their souls they have wasted everything and in hell they will be dwelling forever so o oh allah we ask you to make life for us a source of increase in all types of goodness and to make death for us comfort from every type of hardship and every type of evil amen aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alazim li wa lakum wa li sa'ir almuslimin wal muslimat fastaghfiruhu fa ya fawz almustaghfirin الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد please move forward and make room for for the brothers who are still outside barak الله في الله سبحانه وتعالى في هذه القران commanding the believers to turn to return people's right and to be fair in judgment when you whenever you judge somebody you judge a thing be fair make sure that you return people's right and do not leave them with you because you don't know when death will come he said in allah ya'murukum an tu'addu al-amanati ila ahliha واذا حكمتم بين الناس ان تحكموا بالعدل ان الله نعم ما يعظكم به ان الله كان سميعا بصيرا which means behold allah commands you to return all that you have been entrusted with unto their owners and whenever you judge between people you judge with justice with fairness verily most excellence excellent is what allah exhorts you to do verily allah is all hearing all seeing avoiding being surprised by sudden or expected death involves that you return people's right and correct any wrong you have done to others before the opportunity is missed and that opportunity is that when when that person is alive 
he can forgive forgive you. You can go to him and ask for forgiveness. He can and he can accept. But if that person passes away, you have missed that opportunity. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi in a hadith, in a famous hadith, one day asked his companions, Atadruna Manil Muflis, do you know who the bank robbed person is? And his companions say that a bank robbed person among us is a person who does not have a dinar or a dirham. It does not have a penny. It does not have anything. That's a bank robbed person. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says that no, the true bankrupt person is a person who will come on the day of judgment. It will come with prayers, salat, siyam, fasting, charity, a lot of good deeds. But while he came with that, he came also with a baggage. He has insulted such and such person, say a word that offended him. He has brought slander, accused such and such falsely. He has devoured illegally the wealth of that person, such and such person. He has beaten that person or hates that person. So what will be just at that, that time and that day is that his good deeds, the prayer, fasting, charity, will be taken to pay off these people. So his deed will be given to those people. And when he will run out of good deeds, they will, he will, they will take other people's mistakes and sins, and those sins will be casted on him. And that person will be thrown into hellfire because even with salat and fasting, the, the, the rights of people that he violated will drag him into hellfire. Finally, another thing that we need to do to prepare the day, the day when death comes is writing our will, our last will. That's a way of preparing death and it is also an obligation upon everyone who has something to say which will not be known if you don't write it because after your death, your, uh, after you died, no one will have access to you. So you have to write a will. Allah said in the Quran, commanding the believers to write their will and not to let their relatives or people around them in blindness after their death. To plan everything. He said, Kutiba alaykum ida hadara ahadakumul mautu in taraka khaira nil wasiya tu lil walidaini wal akarabina bil marufi hakan alal muttaqin. It is ordained for you when death approaches any of you if he leaves behind wealth to make a will in favor of his parents and other near of kin in accordance with that is fair, with, that, with which is that is fair. This is binding, this is wajib on all those who, are, who, who have, who are God conscious. So writing your will is an obligation. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the Hadith, ما حق امرئ مسلم له شيء يوصي فيه يبيت ليلتين which means it is not permissible, it is not right for any Muslim who has something to say, has something to, to write, to, to will, to stay for two nights without having his last will and his testament written and kept ready with him for the day he passed away. So that's important. Write your last will. If you're traveling, also make sure that you write it and keep it with someone that you trust, with a lawyer, and make sure that the right will that you write is effective. Do not write something that when you pass away, it will not have any value. And we have uh, a few lawyers in our community that you can consult for that. So, oh Allah, 
We ask you to preserve our hearing, our sight, and our strength so long as you keep us alive and make, make us enjoy all our faculties to the last second we live in this world. O oh Allah, do not make this worldly life our greater concern. Do not make dunya our greater, greatest concern, nor the ultimate limit of our knowledge. Do not make this dunya everything we seek. Do not make this dunya the, um, the ultimate goal of our knowledge, our learning, and our effort. Amen. Amen. In Allah, our Malaikata, who is the one who is يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين أنك حميد مجيد إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيموا الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استو أقيموا صفوفكم تراسوا ولا تختلفوا فتختلف قلوبكم stand shoulder to shoulder do not leave gaps between you for shaitan. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت قال رب رجعون لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت كلا إنها كلمة هو قائلها ومن ورائهم برزخ إلى يوم يبعثون فإذا نفخ في الصور فلا أنساب بينهم يومئذ ولا يتساءلون فما ثقلت موازينه فأولئك هم المفلحون ومن خفت موازينه فأولئك الذين خسروا أنفسهم في جهنم خالدون تلفح وجوههم النار وهم فيها كالحون الله أكبر سبي الله لمن حميده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تلهكم أموالكم ولا أولادكم عن ذكر الله ومن يفعل ذلك فأولئك هم الخاسرون وأنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي أحدكم الموت فيقول فيقول رب لولا أخرتني إلى أجل قريب فأصدق واكم من الصالحين ولن يؤخر الله نفسا إذا جاء أجلها والله خبير بما تعملون الله أكبر سبي الله لمن حمله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Assalamu alaikum. I have some announcements. Our speaker today was Imam Usmain. Uh, the first Friday prayer tends to be crowded. If you can, please try to attend the second prayer. The masjid will be locked one hour after Isha. Masjid use for any group or function needs to be requested in advance with a deposit. Uh, the Lincoln Avenue side res renovation is done. The Al Fatiha tablet in Arabic and English has been placed there. Uh, there are we're going to have photos in front of the tablets. Is Brother Waleed here? When? when? The photos, photos right after the announcements? All right, the photo, we'll take photos in front of the tablets right after these announcements. So, inshallah, please join us for that. Tomorrow is the annual masjid picnic at Kickapoo State Park. That will be at the Walnut Shelter. Please bring a dish to share. The picnic starts at 11 a.m. The Hidayah Academy is hosting an end-of-year celebration today. The event is open to the public and starts at 5.30 at uh, 211 Brownfield Road. If you wish to help the masjid, please see Brother Wakar in the office or call Brother Walid. The masjid needs volunteers for IT, for dawah, and education committees. And in particular, we need uh, volunteers for the farmer's market on Saturdays in Urbana. Uh, you can see Brother Zane, he's right up here at the front, or Brother Wakar. 
Uh, congratulations to brother Faison Rashid and sister Arij. They were blessed with a baby boy and they named him Yusuf. Please make dua for the baby and the family. Brother Hamza and sister Zinab Ahmed's grandmother passed away in, this week in Chicago. Please make dua for them and the family. Uh, free wheelchairs are available to anybody who needs them. And lunch today is gyro sandwiches. A $7 donation is requested. Jazakallah khair.